Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're still working on the chapter seven drill problems, the odd number problems that were assigned in the study guide. And we're going to pick up where we left off um, with drill problems 7-9 through 7-13. Now, uh, these three particular problems actually have to do with uh, figuring out the days, the day, number of days in the discount period and when the, the bill is finally due based upon our terms. So there's not going to be any math as far as calculating, calculating anything because we're looking at the terms of 1% 10 net 30, which is our ordinary dating method. And then we see this here a problem for a 310 net 30 for our uh, receipt of goods. And then we have our problem 3-10 of the end of month. Now, because of the different terms, you know, even though um, the terms are very similar, there's a, the discount is going to be different based upon whatever kind of terms you're offering. So this problem only really deals, these three problems only real, really deal with and determining what the discount period is. Notice you don't have any dollar amounts or anything. So with that said, I'm going to jump up to the next slide here. And um, what I have here is, uh, and this is copied from the textbook, is the exact days in the year calendar. All right. And this is uh, also called a Julian calendar. Now, the reason why I bring this up, and this is also good for like um, when you're doing time value of money, which you'll get to in one of the next chapters, um, it, because when you need to know how many days something is, and you're looking at a specific date on a calendar, I mean, if you look at this table in and of itself, I mean, it starts here on January 1st. So this is January 2nd, January 3rd, and this is the number of days. I mean, so the Julian calendar goes from the first day of the year all the way down to the last day of the year, which is 365 days. And if you notice, as you go down, you get to the end of January, you know, that's 31 days right here. Right? And then February 1st, right, you know, picks up right, I'm sorry, I'm using, this is the number of days column. I'm not paying attention to the headings there, okay? Um, but it still amounts to the same thing. This is January 1st right here. And when we get down to January 31st, that's 31 days. But when we come up to February uh, 1st up here, okay, because this is the, the day of the month. Well, for February 1st, you know, that's the 32nd day in the year. And notice when you get down to the bottom of uh, February, there's only 28 days in February. So this doesn't... Uh, this calendar is not used for leap years. Obviously, leap years meaning there's 29 days, and that would, means we would have 366 days in the year. So, um, you know, this is, leap year is every four years, so this is used for uh, the three years in between. But anyway, so as you can see, you know, we get down to February 28th, you know, that day in the Julian calendar is 59 days. There is no uh, February 29, 30, or 31. So on March 1st, that means that's 60 days. So if I'm sitting here on March 1st, and let's say I have um, a six-month note, and it's going to be due on, I don't know, let's say the 15th. Well, how many days is that? Okay. Well, now you can sit and you can start going, you know, okay, well, how many days are in March? How many days are in May, June, July, August? March, April, May, June, July, all right? So if I'm on March 1st and I said six months, that's one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, okay? All of March, all of May, all of June, all of July, all of August, okay? Um, and I had said uh, a six-month note and it ends on the 15th of the next month. So my six month note would have ended, if it was just strictly six months, it would have ended August 31st. Okay. But I'm adding 15 more days. I want to do it on September 15th, which is right here. Okay. So I have 258 days. 
right? So to know the number of days between March 1st and September 15th, I take 258 and I subtract the 60, and that gives me um, 198 days, okay, between the beginning period and the end of the period. Um, and you can see how this calendar works, okay? Um, you will need it, or it, you know, it's helpful when you're crossing um, across, a, you know, several different months. But the book also shows you this knuckle method. I've never used the knuckle method. I've always used the 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 story, you know, um, 30 days, half, half meaning has 30 days in, 30 days, half September, April, June, 30 days, half September. Oh boy, I don't even remember it now because I'm, I'm getting one of those brain freezes. Um, 30 days, half September, April, June, and November, right? And then all of the rest have 31 with the exception of February, right? So that's kind of like what I use. So if I'm only going from one month to the next and I want to know how many days are in that particular month and I can't remember, I just, you know, 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. So I know those months have 30 days and if I'm not dealing with that, then I know it with one of those months, I know it's 31 days. Um, so whichever method you decide that you want to use uh, uh, to be able to calculate the number of days or to be able to see, that's up to you. Um, when I'm working through the problems, like I said, if I'm working with time value of money problems and we're talking about extended periods of time, you know, um, meaning greater than a month, all right, I'll have a tendency to use this here calendar instead. But if I'm dealing with, you know, just, you know, short term, short uh, periods of time, um, I'm just going to actually end up using my little old saying there. So with that said, let's come back to the, uh, the drill problem. Right? Now, we have on, for problem 7-9, it begins on uh, June 18th. Okay. And our terms are 1% 10 net 30. Okay, so it's asking me for the last day of the discount period. So I'm taking, you know, I'll end up getting a 1% discount, but I'm able to, you know, I'm able to take that within 10 days. Okay, so that means between uh, January, I'm sorry, June 18th plus 10 days. That means I have until June 28th in order to take the discount. And then it says the final day the bill is due at the end of the credit period. So that's 30 days, right? 1% 10 net 30 days. All right. I have to pay the bill um, within that 30 days. Well, the question becomes how many days are in June, right? Well, June has um, 30 days in it, which makes that easy because 30 days from June 18th, right? So June 18th plus 30 days is July 18th. Okay, so 718. That's simple. Now let's just say, for theory's sake, that June had actually 31 days. Okay, well I can't just add 30 days and get July 18th because of that one extra day, all right, in June. So what would end up being, if it would end up being uh, 7 17 July 17th because of that one extra day right if we go back to the calendar um, no, I can't really use the calendar because that's based you know that's a correct calendar but uh, if I was sitting here on the 18th day of June right here okay and Remember, um, see, there's no 31 days here at the end of June. But let's say there was. Well, this would be 182, and then that means this here would be 183, which means when I get 30 days later, I'd end up here on the 17th. Right? I hope you understood that. Um, but I'm not going to get, you know, there will be practice uh, with other problems that deal with 31 days. All right. So with that said, let's just move on here. I know that sounded uh, pretty, that little diversion there. The point being, the point that I was trying to get at was that you do have to pay attention to the number of days in the month. You can't just automatically say, okay, I'm going to add 30 days because it says net 30. 
right? You have to know how many days are in that actual month. Because if it's 30 days, sure, it's easy to go and say 618 plus 10 gives me 718. But let's say this was, um, you know, let's say instead of uh, June 18th, right here, we're calling this July 18th, right? Well, if I have July 18th and I add 10 days, I'm going to end up with August 17th because of the 31 days in July. Okay. All right. So I hope that made more sense. I hope that clarified that a little bit. Okay. So um, problem 7-11. Okay. Uh, let's see here. The uh, for receipt of goods. Okay, so remember the discount period is based upon when the goods are received, not on the invoice date. So it's saying that the invoice date was 515, May 15th. That we don't care about, okay, because the, the goods were received on June 5th. So we're using the June 5th um, date all due to this receipt of goods. Okay. If we didn't have this receipt of goods, it would be treated the same as the ordinary method, meaning from 515, we would add 10 days for the, dis the discount, which would give us um, May 25th for the uh, last day of the discount period. And May has uh, 31 days in it, so that, um, so that would be 515. Um, plus 30, which would give us uh, June 15th, but because there's 31 days in May, um, we can subtract one from the uh, June 15th and we would end up actually with June 14th. That's how you do the ordinary method, but that's not what's being asked here. What's being asked here is the receipt of goods. Okay. So we're going to use the 6-5 instead. And it, you know, we're basically doing the same as the ordinary method, but it's the choice of date that we're dealing with here. So we're, we have 6-5 plus the uh, 10 days, so we get a 3% discount in 10 days. So we have until June 15th to pay, uh, to take the discount. And of course, um, we have a net 30 net 30 days and in June there's only 30 days in the month so we can do that simply by taking the 6-5 and adding 30 days and we end up with 7-5 uh, as our ending date you know when we have to pay the actual bill so really the difference between the um, the ordinary method and the receipt of goods is nothing more than what date you're actually basing the uh, the 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 period of times from. With ordinary method, we're dealing with the invoice date, but with the receipt of goods, we're dealing with the date it was received, and we could care less about the date it was invoiced. Okay. Now, uh, 7-13 is the end of month. Okay, so with 3% 10 end of month, recall that we're talk we have to what we're paying attention to here is whether the invoice date is the 25th and sooner or after the 25th of the month. If the invoice is dated um, by the 25th of the month, okay, that is going to mean we. Um, instead of getting just 10 days, we're going to be paying on the 10th of the following month. So in the ordinary method, if we had 3% 10, we would add 10 days and it would be due 622. But this isn't the ordinary method. This is the end of the month method. So that, ex that will extend our period of time that we can take the discount because why well if it's the invoice is dated the 12th and since that's before the 25th of the month that gives us to the 10th day 
of the following month. Right. Well, the 10th day of the following month is July 10th. Oops, July 10th. Okay, so that's our discount period all the way up to, up to July 10th. It's not the 22nd, right? It's not the 22nd. And as you can see, you know, that's giving us a discount period, you know, instead of just 10 days, it's actually giving us um, a period of like 20, about 20, well, that's eight, 28 days, right? And the reason why this is all important is because, you know, time is money, okay? If you're extending credit to someone, right, that means they have your money, okay? And that makes a, you know, they're able to use that money that you don't, you know, that you don't have. If you had that money, you'd be able to put it in the bank or, you know, use it for your own purposes, but instead you're allowing them to hold your money a lot longer. Now, just quickly, let's say that instead of June 12th, let's say that this invoice was dated um, uh, June 26th, okay? So this is after the 25th. Well, in using the end of month, because it's after the 26th, it gives us one whole extra month. Okay, it, we're in the previous, because it's before the 25th, we said our discount period ends up in, uh, being the following month, or July 10th. But because it's on the 26th of the month, or to the end of the month, that allows us an extra, uh, a whole extra month. So it's not due until actually 8-10. Okay. And then so that so as you can see that's giving that whole extra period. Now um, I failed and you know let me just back up a second here. Okay, so if our discount period was um, if we have 310 end of month and our discount period was 710, well, uh, the final day that the bill has to be paid would be the last day of that particular month, or in this case here, 730. Okay. Um, if it was after the 26th, now that means our discount, you know, the day we have to actually pay the invoice would be 830 or 31. Uh, let's see, yeah, 31, because there's 31 days in August. Right. So, by having something being the end of the month, we're using the actual invoice date. I'll change color here. We're using the actual invoice date, but we're using the 25th or sooner to determine when the discount period is ends and when the final date ends. If it's the 25th and sooner, we look at the next uh, month. The tenth, the tenth day of the next month, as the discount period, and of course the end of the month would be when the bill is due in full. But it's after the twenty, after the twenty-fifth, in other words, twenty-sixth through the end of the month. That's going to give us a whole extra month here, okay? And then of course all the way to the end of the month to pay the bill, right? So. As you can see, each one is sort of like a progression upon the other or giving a different twist. By far, the ordinary method is the one that's used mostly. Okay, um, the receipt of goods, you know, uh, you will in the workplace see that happen, but it's really kind of rare that you see end of month. Um, it all depends upon the industry that you're in. Um, so, but you need to know all three. Right? It's just that simple because you don't know where you're going to be working. Okay, so with that, I'm going to stop here and pick up with 7.15 in the next video.